As you can see, I'm currently cosplaying a McDonald's employee from the very early 90s. This is a 2007 iMac that was given to me by one of my family members. The machine itself works, but the keyboard does not. In fact, the batteries are so corroded inside it that they've more or less fused into one chunk of metal. So we're going to try and save this keyboard, if it's even possible, and uh, potentially clean this guy up, maybe even upgrade him a bit if I have some parts on hand, and go through the horrible process of removing the glass and worrying about breaking it. Definitely gonna put a solid state drive in it, and I'm hoping that I have some extra RAM laying around that'll fit inside here. Join me, if you will, for another And don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so obviously the first thing we wanna do is test it. So I'm gonna plug in a mouse and keyboard. Shebang, shaboom. Mmm, how's that taste? And also for those who don't like the burping, not to worry, there isn't too much left in the video. Uh, so this is actually a 2007 iMac. I know I've said 8 sometimes, but it's a 2.4 GHz, 2 GB, 2007 base model. Now the keyboard quite obviously is not in good shape because the batteries have rusted together from all these years of corrosion um, and I tried to loosen them up with some vinegar. It fizzed a little bit but it didn't seem to have a huge effect. And I figured I needed a little more motivation to loosen them up. Something along the lines of, say, a hammer. Okay, so hammer and vinegar didn't do anything. On to the computer itself. First things first, let's give it a cleanup. Just gonna peel off the sticker remnants, hit it with some decks, a couple paper towels, fold it in half. There's a throwback to the early videos. And just give her a good old wipe down. This machine had a lot of love in it and uh, on it. And uh, little Windex never hurt anyone's Mac. Next up, we got ice purple alcohol to remove some of the junk from the bottom. Since we're getting closer to parts, I just I didn't want to spray Windex into the cooling vents. Uh, feet get a clean up with some ISO as well. Uh, it's good for getting stuff off of rubber, and then drying out the rubber. <laughs> uh, here we are cleaning off the back of the machine with some Windex as well. Nice and fast drying. And let's take a look at that RAM. Try and get a vacuum hose in there, maybe, because it is dirty. Another positive part is sucks the tabs out for pulling the RAM out later. So, removing the glass on a 2008 and the models corresponding uh, with that line of IMAX is actually quite simple. You just need a couple suction cups and it lifts right off as it's held in with magnets. Bunch of different size screws come out from around it there, and when I say a bunch of different sides, I mean like the top and the, the left side are the same, and then the right side is its own shape, and then the bottom has two different sizes, so make sure you keep track. <clears throat> off comes the case, and actually the uh, little wire here uh, for the webcam had some tape around it, so I had to cut the tape off first. A couple screws come out and the LCD monitor's connector to the board can be removed. A little bit of vacuuming to get some of that dirt out of there. And actually, I think I lost the footage of me cleaning the fan on the left, so my apologies. Um, but somewhere in the recording of human history, that video exists. So this cable I'm pulling off the back of the LCD actually really sucked. It took me a really long time to loosen it, and I didn't include that footage here because it also sucked. Uh, but it lets us move on to the hard drive, which you can see had some temperature sensors on it. Remove the connection clips, and you are pretty much good to go. There's some hardware on that hard drive that we're going to transfer over to the new one, uh, which is this 128 gig Lexar. And actually, I had this this funky little SSD uh, frame thing and oddly enough the screws that came with it were too big so I had to dig into uh, daddy's own screw collection and find some and then these little uh, tabs came out of the hard drive and went into the new one quite easily I just had to tighten them up with some pliers and then the little clip bracket goes on you love to see it 
tighten up the screws and slides right back in and that's why we kept those little posts that were coming out of the other one because they slip right into place to hold the thing securely temperature sensors go back on but I'm not too worried about it this thing gets so hot everything is probably a hundred degrees when you're using it we can slide that LCD back on and you know what I thought about changing the thermal paste and I probably should have but it, you know, with the amount of time that I had to film this video and the amount of work that it was going to take to get the motherboard out, I just didn't bother. I know I'm going to come back and upgrade this machine further down the road, so, you know, maybe thermal paste is something we'll do later. So, clips back on, screws back in. I think it's eight per side to get the LCD back onto the chassis. And then I pulled out the airbrush just to blow some of the hairs off, because you know how you have to lean the glass back over top, which means you need a clean LCD and clean glass. So before the frame goes in, we're gonna clean her up a little bit too. Wasn't too bad on the inside, just a quick wipe down with some Windex and we're good to go. This thing didn't want to come off with the ISO or the Windex, but for some reason the oil on my thumb was, I guess, corrosive enough to remove it. Lucky me. Sweating acid over here. So the outer shell goes back into place after reconnecting the webcam cable. All the different size screws make their way back into their different size holes. A couple fancy shots there, and look at this bad boy. We're halfway there. Time to lean some glass into place. So the magnets do all the work for you here. You just have to make sure everything's lined up. Um, and uh, we're pretty much good to test. Let's see if we get a bong. There she blows. So after a little bit of hand motioning, we're gonna watch this machine start up real quick. There we go. Time to install El Capitan. So this process is not exactly interesting. Uh, I don't expect anyone to want to watch it. That's why I sped it up to a thousand percent. <clears throat> now, I want to start tooling around with the RAM, but I need to make sure I know what I'm doing. This is the first one with bottom feeding RAM that I've messed around with. And I want to put in these 2 gig chips, and they're a little bit quicker than the uh, 1 gigs that I pulled out. So I was hoping that there would be no issues. And uh, guess what? It wouldn't even turn on. <laughs> Try and make sure the RAM is actually in the socket. Same thing. Try swapping them around. And still nothing. So I put the original chips back in. And it still wouldn't turn on. So what I ended up having to do is get up, go around the back, unplug the power source, plug it back in, and then it turned on. And I thought, you know what, this should work the same thing for the 2 gig uh, sticks. So I went and I tried to do that, and you know what, even with the power coming in and out, Nothing with the two gig sticks, so back to the one gigs and Here is the official comparison of startup uh, pre and post solid-state hard drive, so It's a little bit long. I'm just gonna sit back here and uh, sip on my own self-satisfaction while this plays out Mmm, that's some good self-satisfaction. Alright, so at 18 seconds, we already have a login screen with the solid state. And after logging in, which took a little bit longer than it should have, we're done at 23 seconds. And the reason it took longer than it should have is my magic keyboard, uh, my wired one, for some reason, the uh, square bracket key is stuck, and um, it just types it infinitely. So when the login screen came up, it started typing square brackets. I had to stop, delete them, and actually log in. So it's probably closer to 21, 22 seconds with the solid-state hard drive. Oh, Winslow's drinking some water right next to me. That's nice. He's now sneezing in it. 
So he sneezed in his water and now he's drinking it. He's now looking me in the eyes. And he's going back to the water. So, it looks like we have a login screen up top. We're logging in. I'm kind of taking my time with it. You know, this is not the Olympics. Um, <laughs> but it's still... You know, there's a reasonable amount of time for it to get to that screen. I mean, I, I think it's a total of 8 seconds from the login to the actual dock showing up. Which is like a third of the time with the solid state hard drive completely. So minute three without, 23 with. Now it's time to test out some programs. So we're gonna install Firefox as any good computer folk would. Remove all the extra garbage from the dock. Uh, play some clips of Minecraft uh, that I shot before I moved everything from the dock, apparently. As you can see, Minecraft's a bit choppy, but it is doable on this machine. Uh, Winslow had something to say, and so did June, so we stopped and played with them for a minute. That's while Counter-Strike did its thing. So now I'm trying to open Counter-Strike, and Counter-Strike took a long time. And I gotta say, like, I used to play this game when it was 1.5, 1.6, back when it was still a Half-Life mod, and then, it, you know, when Steam was invented so you could play Counter-Strike and Day of Defeat on there. Uh, as you can see, the machine's getting really hot, so I put the house fan on it. Um, but I just wanted to say, Counter-Strike GO is a fantastic game. It's just changed so much from the original. Like, it's very close to the original, but the, the game itself, the graphics, everything are so stepped up that, you know, I used to run 1.5, 1.6 on computers that were, you know, way crappier than this one. Um, it's just a, a much newer game now. So Stardew Valley actually ran flawlessly. You would never have known that I just was unable to play Counter-Strike uh, and struggled my way through Minecraft. Stardew Valley, not only did it play well, it was gorgeous. Cuphead, on the other hand, did not play at all. Like, as you can see, I'm trying to navigate through the world, uh, and it's taking quite some time. Wait till you see the fight that just is about to start. Yeah. What's that, like six frames per second? So obviously the newer games aren't working out. Time to play my favorite. That's Diablo 2. I'm gonna make a barbarian named Steely Dan, as I always do. And in the aggressive spirit of the game, Winslow's decided to attack my aunt. Diablo 2 runs fine. You know, I, you knew it would. It takes like half a second to install. <clears throat> Starcraft Remastered and uh, Warcraft Reforged would not work at all. And that is a wrap on the 2008 24-inch iMac. So obviously this thing is not a great gaming machine. I'd say the biggest limitation on this thing is probably the OS. Because I have El Capitan installed on this, a lot of games won't even take you through their installation. I do know that you can upgrade this to High Sierra, for example, you know, but with two gigs of RAM, it's gonna be pretty rough. I'd say the biggest downside to this machine is definitely the cooling. While the OS is a limitation, the cooling thing really is a downside. This thing gets so hot that you would think it was gonna burn your skin. Look, I'm not a doctor. So aside from all that I've listed, this machine has some really awesome I.O. ports. This is actually a great example of something that could be used as a future bridge machine between different generations of Macs. It has three USB 2.0 ports, one Firewire 400, Firewire 800, it's got mini DVI, sound in port, ethernet, headphone jack, bibbidi bap, shibbidi shoap, and don't you call back. No more, no more, no more, no more. This thing also has an optical drive on the side, or as they refer to them as the super drive. And if you have an SD card, then too f***ing bad. Another complaint, the Wi-Fi is slow as balls on this machine. I have 750 megabit internet at home, and it took like a lifetime to download an 8 gigabyte file with this. So I would definitely plug it in, as it has the ethernet port on the back. So what are my final thoughts on this machine? Well, it's a geared down gaming machine, if you want it to be with beautiful display, somewhat limited on graphics, and it could definitely use a RAM upgrade. The cooling is terrible, and I ended up using this house fan, 
to cool the back of the machine because it got so hot. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to play games on this, if you're going to use it at all. If you're going to turn it on, you're going to need to cool the back of it, probably. So like a pretty good standard of whether a machine can play games is will it play Minecraft, right? It's kind of in the middle. New Minecraft is not exactly as simple as it used to be, so this one handled 1.17 enough and you could play it for an evening um, but you'd be better off probably with a better machine taking it back to the monitor honest to god this monitor is so nice i have a 32 inch 4k lg monitor on my pc desktop and i would rather look at this for eight hours a day what else is this good for this is a great machine for writers such as myself or accountants or people who love microsoft office it looks great and it'll do what you need it to. Again, provided you're not doing anything special. If you are not special, this is the machine for you. So that's it for today's video. I suspect we'll see this iMac back on the bench soon-ish. And a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, even as much as I enjoy olives, which is not very much and only in a certain context, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's a simple gesture and it goes a long way for a fella like me.